Howard closed out on by Garnett, who has four fouls. It's one on one, off the crossover to the rim. Josh Howard schooling the MVP. Josh Howard, a name you may not be quite familiar with, especially our younger viewers. Those of you who do remember Josh Howard might recall some of his off court issues and trouble he got himself into during his NBA career. Howard's career started normally. Then things started to click, and then came some of the obstacles. This is the story of how budding NBA star Josh Howard quickly fell out of the league. Let's start our story where Howard's basketball career began at Wake Forest. Howard's freshman campaign had its ups and downs, as do most Division I college athletes. Josh quickly grew as a player, however, going into his sophomore season and earned himself all ACC honors as he took strides as a scorer and mightily improved his defensive presence. Howard backed up his respectable 2000-2001 season with another strong season the following year as he once again earned all ACC honors under new head coach Skip Prosser. Skip Prosser, the head coach Josh Howard would later go on to say, was like a father figure to him and, per quote, was the guy that pushed me over the top. Prosser did just that, as Howard blossomed in his second and final season under Coach Prosser. Howard, as a senior, went from All-ACC to the ACC Player of the Year, a member of ACC All-Defense and a consensus All-American. The six foot seven wing led the Demon Deacons to a 25-6 and six record as a senior and cemented himself as a likely 2003 NBA draft selection under the guidance of Coach Prosser, who instilled work ethic and the importance of off-the-court habits in Howard. Howard quickly became an intriguing forward in the draft process that left both fans and scouts divided. Some saw Howard as a surefire first-round selection, as an accomplished collegiate player with tools that translate well to the NBA, a fluid scorer. What a move by Josh! A gifted slasher. And an athletic wing with good defensive potential. Others saw him as a second round player due to inconsistencies as a shooter, limited potential as a four year college player, and questions about size in a physical NBA. Howard was still on the board at pick 29, the final selection of the first round, and the Dallas Mavericks were on the clock. Then head coach and GM Donnie Nelson did what Donnie Nelson does best, draft. The Dallas Mavericks selected Josh Howard at pick 29, solidifying him as a first round selection. The selection was surprising as the Mavericks already possessed two starting wings in Michael Finley and Nick Van Exel, and many felt they needed to address the center position to fill out their front court alongside franchise player Dirk Nowitzki. Howard began to prove his new head coach right during his rookie season, however, as he went on to average nearly nine points, five and a half rebounds, a steal per game, and nearly a block per game in only 23 minutes a night. Howard nabbed an all-rookie second-team award in the same class as future Hall of Famers LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and Carmelo Anthony took up 80% of the all-rookie first-team spots. Howard then took another stride forward in his second season, becoming a full-time starter with the departures of both Michael Finley and Nick Van Exel, alongside newly acquired guards Jason Terry and Devin Harris. Howard's introduction to the starting lineup was met with an immediate uptick in production as Josh nearly averaged 13 points per game and six and a half rebounds in his new role. At this point though, Howard was nowhere near a star. Not yet anyway. Before the 2005-2006 season, head coach Donnie Nelson stepped down from his head coach position and handed the job to Avery Johnson, his protege, while retaining the GM title. Under new head coach Avery Johnson, Josh Howard blossomed as a player again, just like he had under Coach Prosser at Wake Forest. By the end of the 2005-2006 season, Howard was a focal point offensively of a team in the NBA Finals alongside Dirk and Jason Terry under first-year head coach Avery Johnson. The Mavericks did fall short in that series, but Howard displayed his potential with two 20-point games in the series. Following the disappointing finals loss in what is now known as the fix of 06, the next season, the Dallas Mavericks came out blistering hot and rode into All-Star Weekend with a 51-9 record, including their third win streak of at least 10 games on the year, which was at 16 straight at the time. The Mavs seemed better now than the team in the finals last year, and a big reason why 
was none other than Josh Howard. Howard was named to the All-Star team for the first time in his career and finished the year averaging 18.9 points per game, nearly seven rebounds a game, while shooting 48% from the field, 38.5% from three, and 83% from the stripe. Josh had become one of the best two-way wings in the world. He emerged as a unique creator off the bounce. Howard. Boy, how a dynamic slasher with a killer first step. The perimeter it looked like. Now he dances baseline away from Serbia. And with thunder throws it down. The Warriors, Steven Jackson and Baron Davis. The other supporting cast. Look, look at some deer and headlights. In NBA playoff history. And here's Howard. The catch and the foul. An athletic freak in transition and as a cutter. To Josh Howard. La di dee, la di da. Same story, different day. Offensive rebound. Vampire. Howard is fouled. It counts. And a key defensive weapon to anchor Dallas's defense. Shooting. Overplay. The steal by Howard. Ford. Bargnani. Shot rejected by Howard. Josh Howard. Long to the lane. Slashes inside. Jason Williams gets it to O'Neal. By Jason Williams, anytime Shaq man leaves you, get the ball to the big guy. Howard's ascension to basketball stardom had the NBA world buzzing during Dallas's phenomenal season. Then Sports Illustrated journalist Jack McCallum published an article titled The Mav Who Makes the Difference. In this article, McCallum stated, if the league's winningest team is to take the final step to an NBA title, no player will be as crucial as forward Josh Howard, who has established himself as Dirk Nowitzki's right-hand man. Kobe Bryant even took notice of Howard's game, stating the following. They haven't had uh, Josh Howard any of the three games played in this year. Uh, what kind of different wrench does he play? He's a problem. Yeah. He's a problem. Because he's another guy that you got to really focus on, especially on that block, yeah. in the mid-post. You, know, you really got to pay attention to him, his offensive rebound capabilities, getting possessions back for his team. He's, he's a problem. At this point, it was clear Josh's game and fame were both trending in the right direction, or so we thought. Fast forwarding past the 67 and 15 Mavericks historic postseason collapse at the hands of the A seeded We Believe Warriors, we find ourselves ahead of game three in the 2008 first round playoff series matchup with the New Orleans Hornets led by Chris Paul holding a 2 0 lead over the Dallas Mavericks. Howard was coming off his best statistical season in the NBA, posting averages of 19.9 points per game, seven rebounds a night, and a career high 2.2 assists per game. Howard, before the game, was invited on ESPN Radio for an interview with Michael Irvin. In this interview, Howard admitted to smoking marijuana in the offseason, stating, I don't think that's stopping me from doing my job. Marijuana was a banned substance in the NBA at the time, and this admission would cause Howard to be drug tested more frequently. The Mavericks went on to lose the series in five games, and Avery Johnson, the head coach that helped Howard emerge as a star, was fired after another disappointing postseason collapse. The Mavericks announced the hiring of new head coach Rick Carlisle on May 9, 2008, just weeks after firing Avery Johnson. Months later, and Josh made another poor decision. Howard had been arrested in August 2008 in North Carolina for going 95 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone while drag racing. Not long after, another video surfaced of Howard at Allen Iverson's charity football game. The video was taken during the playing of the national anthem and Howard is heard saying, I don't celebrate this shit, I'm black. This was widely regarded as unacceptable at the time and did not help Howard's status. Howard's 0809 campaign was a little streaky as he only played in 52 games due to a variety of injuries while scoring 18 points a night, a notable step down from the 20 points per game the year earlier, and also only recorded 5.1 rebounds a game. That was a career low for Howard at this point. In his age 28 season and first year under new head coach Rick Carlisle, Howard's upward trajectory seemed to have stalled following his poor decisions. Reports of a clash between Howard and Carlisle surfaced. In hindsight, these reports seem to be verified. As we look back on the 2009-2010 season, Howard's offensive efficiency plummeted as he shot only 40% from the field in 31 games as a Maverick and an abysmal 26% from behind the arc. Howard's struggles and his clashes with head coach Rick Carlisle found him now out of the starting lineup and his future in Dallas in question. February 13, 2010, 
Josh Howard was traded with three other players to the rebuilding Washington Wizards for two-time All-Star Karan Butler, center Brendan Haywood, and guard Deshaun Stevenson. Washington was receiving cap space flexibility and a buy-low opportunity for the struggling Howard. The Mavs, in turn, received three key pieces to their 2011 championship team. For Josh, this was an opportunity to restore himself in NBA circles. Howard seemed to be making the most of that opportunity, scoring 14, 20, and 17 points in his first three games as a Wizard. His fourth game as a Wizard came on February 22, 2010, against the Chicago Bulls, and Josh had a real strong start, scoring seven points in his first eight minutes. However, with four minutes and 26 seconds left in the first quarter, Howard caught an outlet pass in traffic and went down to the ground immediately. Howard had torn his ACL in his left knee. His opportunity to return to stardom went down with it. Howard went on to play 72 more games after tearing his ACL during the remainder of his career, but he wasn't the same player. Now in his 30s and coming off a devastating injury, Howard's game had diminished. Those final 72 games came over three seasons with three different teams, the Wizards, the Jazz, and the Minnesota Timberwolves. He averaged only 8.3 points per game in those final 72 games of his career on 39% shooting from the field, and again, 26% from three. His offensive capabilities diminished, his defensive presence had vanished, and his best basketball was behind him. Howard had gone from young NBA star to out of the league in the blink of an eye. Poor decisions, unfortunate timing for an injury, and situations out of his control shaped what could have been an incredible career. This was the story of how budding NBA star Josh Howard quickly fell out of the league.